Hello all, I am Shreesha and I have completed my engineering. Now in this video, I will try to explain the nature of universal reality by keeping this manuscript as the reference. It is the eternal purest knowledge uh, which I am going to present as I have understood. This manuscript is in Kannada language with Sanskrit or Samskrita terms and its meanings. So, so let me read it quickly to understand its terms as it is in its own original language. Starting, starting from this verse, Vishvahora hola vyaputani no truna samana jiva nanu. Dosha Gnana the Iruvana Nanu Karuna Yinda Su Vignana Nidu Vishnu Namisu Vesada Narajana Nike Ananta Ayama Gadali Neres Nelesuvanige Kala the Niyama Kanike Srushti of Bedakige Divya Nir Dosha Gnana Nandanige Shashvata Vishnu Sarvotama Baji Suvava Moksha Prada Hari Jagade Kanata Antargata Parakala Pramhanta Chalayaka Veda Vedya Sarva Vedya Nitya Paripurna Koti Ravi Prabha Chandra Shanta Suprakasha Shri Hrishi Kesha Prana Rudra Vandita Hari Paramesha Tarka Miri the Satya Sugunotama Adi Bantyanta Rahita Purvaja Paramanu Alekala Maha Mahimana Vandusuve Vimana Dolagina Madveshana Yerudu Bhagaya Tatvadi Svatantra Hari Paratantra Jada Jeevi Jada Jada di Bheda Iralu Jeeva di Shri Matti Tararu Tara Tamya Jeevi Galelli Nitya Sva Bhava Dulu Vasu Deva Purayu Vasakalaranu A Desha Kala Dulu Yatharta Pramana Bhakti Tili Davaru Sadagara di Hogalu Vaikunta Dulu Vishwaru Panarayana Hari Achutananta Govinda Hari Priyatam. Now I'll try to translate this rich knowledge into English language. First, let us know the introduction or uh, the basic the basic explanation of reality, which is specially given in this verse. This is a classification of reality uh, which can be uh, which can be written using a chart. So this is the chart of that verse which I showed. So reality may uh, is there uh, there exist only two types of reality dependent and independent. Reality means or uh, in Sanskrit it's called as tatva tata va means which means grasping as it is yatharta jnana which is the secret and utmost knowledge so reality can be classified into independent and dependent entities independent is only lord vishnu vishnu alone is the independent and rest all is dependent on the lord vishnu so the dependent can be cl again classified into life and matter there is difference between life consciousness or soul and the matter matter do not have any characteristics of life but life is a consciousness it's a jnana and ananda swarupa but matter is nothing it's just a function or uh, the inputs which the life gives and output which which is extracted from it by our programs or uh, code written on that so so the matter so there are many types of matters like there are fundamental particles called muons gluons quarks and all those things so there are there is difference between the particles and other particles which is also given and eh, which is given in the panchabeda and there are two types of life again one is called as shri entity or lakshmi and these are other lives this Shri entity or Lakshmi is the highest of life in the, in terms of knowledge, devotion and strength. She is the 
most devotee and most knower of lord vishnu and all other knowledge when compared to other lives hence there exist difference between lives also for example there are no dna is matches other dna same as there exist there exist diff- differences in interests actions according to their personal intent instinct and interests so the lives can be classified according to psychological basis and spiritual basis this classification is purely based on its swabhava means its own nature of life the own nature of soul the own nature of consciousness hence based on the nature of consciousness each soul acquires the knowledge according to its own ability but the lord who vasudeva which means who is present everywhere i mean every term of the lord resemble tells the tells each or many auspicious qualities of the lord hence the lord will bless everyone and wishes good for all according to their abilities so coming back to the manuscript i'll try as i told i'll try to translate briefly of these verses so we'll start with from this verse and before starting it is clear that there exist only one god which is which also hinduism talks about uh, the importance and uh, greatness of monotheist monotheism there is exist only one god so these remaining verses uh, briefly describe about how is god and what is god or the how the lord vishnu actually is so we know that that the diameter of the observable universe is about 1 billion light years and we live on a planet called earth whose radius is around 6000 kilometers but we the humans who are called so called rational animals the humans are only about 5 feet tall in length so the living creatures are to so tiny that they are filled with defective knowledge not comp- um, imperfect knowledge so the author asks the lord vishnu to provide the purest knowledge and bliss always along with the awareness so as the intellect is expanded expanded and more knowledge is gained in the life so the author is asking lord vishnu as the vi- the term vishnu means vishati ti vishnu means one who is present in and out of the entire creation or the universe and the lord is omniscient and only the lord is capable of providing such a great knowledge next in this verse the author bows down to the lord of highest dignity who exist in all dimensions or infinite dimensions um who exist in all time continuously who knows the past present and future who gave the light to the existence it is the god who is spiritual without any defects so the lord vishnu is devoid of all the defects who is purest and who is all the auspicious qualities and always exist in a state of utmost bliss and awareness everything in all dimensions in all relative space time is governed by the lord vishnu here the term narayana is used instead of vishnu as narayana means one who is in highest dignity unborn and omnipotent the word here divya tells that the lord do not have any physical form but he is of but it's of divine characteristics and form in this verse the author defines 
the Lord Vishnu as the only eternal and purest who can give the salvation to the devotees and wishes good for all who is the knower, driver and owner of all universe. As a parent, as the only parent of cosmos and life, the Lord has given the opportunity to all life you to utilize in a right way and achieve something which is the useful. So the only God or Vishnu has the ability to provide the salvation to the right soul, right soul who deserve it. And he is addressed as Parakala, means one who moves the time in unidirection. So as everything functions accordingly with it. In this verse, the Lord Vishnu, who is directly known by the highest quality, purest, eternal, unchanged, holy and sacred scriptures called Vedas, which is Apaurusheya. The Lord can be known by all forms of existence which we see and which we cannot see also. Every word in all language or anything describes Lord Vishnu as the Lord Vishnu is the origin of all. The only thing is that we have to look at it in the proper way, in our proper angle. So, the Lord who is propounded by Vedas is complete, absolutely complete and shines like a thousands of suns together, put together and gives peace and refreshment just as thousands of full moons put together. And that is, for this, it's the, the Lord is given name here as Hrishi Kesha. The term Hrishi Kesha means the Lord of the senses, Hrishika Isha, the Lord of the senses. It is from Narayana that, that the universe and life came into being in a beautiful and scientific sequence. It is from Vishnu that the universe, relative space, time, consciousness, senses and sense organs, intellect came into being for every life. So, Hrishi Kesha means the Lord who is within all the senses, who, who governs it, who controls it, and who is subtle, may bless all of us. And that Hrishi Kesha named God or Vishnu is praised by many great scholars and mighty persons like Prana, Shiva, Indra and many others. It is that God where all scholar worship in some or the different ways. In this verse, the author talks about some of the human characteristics. Like, as humans are limited to their knowledge, God is also beyond the logic of the humans. The God is beyond everything. But here the author mainly talks about the logic and think thinking abilities of the humans. The logic and thinking depends on the memory which is stored by a person with their limited knowledge and information and many assumptions. If the stored information in the brain is itself is incorrect, then the logic also becomes incorrect. If that is taken as true, then it becomes a false notion which may lead to the incorrect inference and conclusions. So, logic can take only up to a certain level and from there the spiritual experience according to the proper knowledge or knowledge as it is, is obtained by nature, technology and 
eternal scriptures like vedas and bhagavad gita the god the lord vishnu is unborn with no end the lord exists both in smallest of all fundamental particles and the infinity it is because for the proper functioning of the universe the god is the creator operator designer and destroyer of the cosmic cycle of the eternal cosmic cycle for the welfare of all lives the lord vishnu who is omnipresent gives the suitable energy constantly and consistently so that the vibrations of the universe exist and he is present in all waves for the proper propagation to reach its right destination every particle or everything in this physical world vibrates just as an energy is needed for the ignition of vibration and the energy must be constantly supplied so that it is it keeps on vibrating the lord vishnu is a source of all physical energy and spiritual energy hence it is on this energy of the lord that everything in this universe the consciousness soul the life and all physical matter and spiritual existence depends on the lord vishnu along with tulasi shri so the author bows down to the lord vishnu who is full of the greatest qualities spiritual qualities and who is praised by a great teacher and scholar called shri madhvacharya it looks like shri madhvacharya praises the lord sitting on the vimana here the term vimana is used which indicates the celestial vehicles of the angels or demigods there are many research on the vimanas by many scientists and aerospace engineers and also by me on which the vimanas could work on vimanas could work on the anti gravity technology anti gravity technology controlled by the brain waves of the human so the author who is the scholar and more intelligent describes the lord as the most beautiful ever in the cosmos the most beautiful who maintain the most beautiful who maintains the relative time for example in a book called vaikuntha varnane of the saint shri vadi raja he mathematically describes the time dilation of the brahmaloka to the earth he calculates and explains the saint calculates the time on our earth to the to the time on 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 our earth which is of three dimension to the to the brahma loka to the brahma loka of its dimension and location and comes to conclusion that about a second on our earth is approximately equal sorry i'm sorry a second in a brahm in that brahma loka is approximately equal to the 1 lakh years or 10 power 5 years on our earth just imagine one second in brahma loka means a 10 power 5 or 1 lakh years on our earth such a great designer is the lord vishnu who is the creator designer operator driver and destroyer of the cosmic cycle and life the god can only be realized 
to spiritual experience by doing good works in society gaining the knowledge and meditating on the lord vishnu the good works should not be of any attachments it should be of the duty so may the love and knowledge of the god bless all of us and i try to translate very briefly as i can and thanking you all thank you very much hari priyato bhavatu